forgot to say this and make it clear. When you're degreeing the camshaft, remember the camshaft turns at one half speed of the crankshaft. Both the camshaft goes through a, a 360 degree cycle and the crankshaft goes through two 360 degree cycles. So the crankshaft is doing 720 degrees of rotation um, along with the camshaft doing uh, 360. So when you take that 212 degrees on uh, the intake uh, timing cycle, remember we found maximum lift on the intake. We went 50 thousandths down from maximum lift on the the uh, side that was advan uh, going towards uh, the rotation, which would be the advanced side uh, before top dead center. And then we went the other way, and we went on the back side of maximum lift, which would be after top dead center, uh, 50 thousandths. So you're taking the degrees from 50 thousandths before top dead center, and the degree degrees from 50 thousandths after top dead center, you add those two together and you get 212 on our application, on what we're doing. Now, since that's uh, degrees on your wheel that's attached to your crankshaft, therefore crankshaft degrees of 212. To get to your intake center line, you have to have camshaft degrees. So you have to divide the 212 crankshaft degrees by two because your crank camshaft is running half speed you divide that by two and then you get your camshaft degrees which puts it at 106 degrees for the intake center line so i hope that that makes uh that uh timing method that comp cams uses um it, it's a little bit more accurate there's less degree uh less room for error when you are um running uh, both sides there on uh, 50 thousandths before top dead center and 50 thousandths after top dead center. I think it gives a bit, little bit less room for error. And uh, that's where our camshaft ended up at was exactly 106 degrees intake center line, which is what's specified for that cam. So anyway, hope that that clears up the issues. I hope I did not confuse you any worse. Remember, there is more than one way to degree the camshaft. And um, so what we did was we did the intake center line method. We backed it up and looked at uh, the lift at uh, six thousandths of an inch, which was pretty close to the specified 20 degrees. I was probably off just a little bit on parallax looking at my lift and my um, indicator on the degree wheel because it was looking like 22 degrees. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to get it exactly when you, unless you make sure you know that you're looking exactly uh, the same position every single time. But on that, uh, going on the intake center line, I'm confident that we're right at 106 degrees. All right, take care. Hope that cleared things up. All right, welcome back. We're getting ready to show you a little bit about porting the heads. We're going to work on the exhaust side today. A uh, couple things you need. Good air supply. You don't want to be waiting on your air compressor to keep up. So when it comes to tools, buy you a nice, big, good air compressor. Um, I don't have one big, good air compressor. So necessity is a mother invention. And uh, if you want something bad enough, you'll figure a way. I hooked up two air compressors. And so I've got a hydraulic hose that I had to make with a 3 8 inch pipe to fit on air valves. Maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm wrong. It might be quarter inch. Anyway, um, I've got my air fittings and my T's. So I come out of these two compressors with this hose and then into my air hose. So I have these two compressors running on this single hose to power the air tool I told you about. And then you want to make sure that every time if you use it very much, you go ahead and use an air tool oil. And you don't want to skimp on the air tool oil, but you don't want to flood it either. 
All right, so what we're going to do, make sure you wear eye protection and hearing protection because um, it will get loud and you don't want to ruin your ears for later on in life, especially when you're trying to hear the grandkids say something and you can't hear Jack. Or when you're older, you can't enjoy your children or your family because you have no hearing. That happened to my poor father. And uh, boy, he misses out on so much of life because he did not protect his hearing. So, I use these roll up ones and then we're gonna roll the cylinder head up to where we can work on that exhaust valve guide. And I'm gonna put a little block back here to where it makes it easier to get to the angle I'm wanting to work at. And remember, we're thinking about shaping this port in the direction that the airflow goes. So on the intake, we shaped it coming in, and now on the exhaust, of course, we'll shape it going out. And we think of it as an airplane wing, so we decrease turbulence, we increase velocity, we increase flow. A, a high-speed, high-velocity port is going to be happy, and you're not going to have flaps near as many uh, problems tuning your uh, motor to be sharp and responsive. So we'll kind of get started in here. Remember, we got the rounded bit. That's a, a real nice one to have. Well, let's get started in this shape. Kind of move this to where it's easier for me. Got to have a good, comfortable position. Now, if you will look, See how we're getting shaped up there? Now it's probably going to be easier. We'll try going through the port. All right, let me get a flashlight. Okay, you can see I'm kind of getting that roughed into the shape. I'm going to bring it in on the other side. It's a lower speed on this side, uh, so I want to be careful that I don't mess things up. But I'm going to shape that into that fin on the back part of the wing and then round it into that base of that port. See, I'm getting close now. We're going to round it and smooth it a little bit more to get that fin work there and then call it good. good see how that's got a nice smooth flow especially in the high side we're going to come back in and clean that up at the very top there but that's looking pretty pretty much good on a rough shape there so we'll clean it up a little That's looking pretty good. Now let's work on the bowl, on the short turn of the bowl, and smoothing out the bowl, blending it. this up we might polish this a little bit more now up here on the top that you don't want to take out you want to smooth it up and smooth this top as much as possible but don't hog it out because this actually acts like a venturi that as it got the hot gases go through the smaller area they come into the bowl 
the, as they cool off, it starts to increase that flow. And so you want this Venturi effect. It was cast to where it's pretty close to the same valve side diameter. But from what I understand from guys that have worked uh, with these heads, that you want that Venturi to be about 85% of the valve diameter. So don't be hogging out in there, just smooth it up for airflow. And then we'll contour this a little bit more, contour this edge a bit more, but the short side radius, nice and smooth. We didn't hog it out, we simply made it smooth. So once again, you just gotta go with what you got and maximize what you got and uh, not start hogging things out. So we'll polish this thing up and work on the other ports. And once again, the other thing, the other thing that's important is you can get a nice smooth finish on the exhaust side and you're fine. You do not want a smooth polish finish on the intake side because the fuel will be more likely to drop out of suspension and adhere to the walls. So don't be polishing the intake side. That's a mistake. All right, we're going to work on this thing a little bit more.